So, you have your Raspberry Pi and a DHT22 temperature and humidity sensor. You wanted to retrieve and see the real-time sensor readings and display it on your mobile phones. Is that possible? Well, using Python, Class, and Class Socket I.O. will do the job. All we need to do is to create a web server on our Raspberry Pi and create a web application and use WebSocket to retrieve the real-time readings. Just like my custom DHT22 weather station project that shows a dashboard of my DHT22 sensor readings in both text and graphical chart format. The historical chart displays the last 12 readings while the gauge displays the value in a range format. It automatically updates every 3 seconds to retrieve the latest DHT22 readings. If you try holding the sensor, then the graph will shut up. This is quite a cool project. If you want to learn more, then let's start exploring. Hi! Welcome to Don's Key Tech. In this video, we are going to build our own DHT Feather Station project using the Raspberry Pi where we will display real-time sensor readings through WebSocket. It will contain a dashboard that will show the current DHT22 temperature and humidity readings. We will display it in both text and graphical format so as to show the real-time movement of the temperature readings. This image shows the overall design of our project where we are going to create a web server inside our Raspberry Pi that will serve our web application. At the same time, it will communicate with our DHT22 sensor to retrieve the latest sensor readings. We will be using Python in programming our backend web server application with the Raspberry Pi. And in order to create the web server, then we're going to use the PLAS micro web framework. The PLAS socket IO is used to exchange messages between the web application and our DHT22 for AM2302 sensor. I have used the Bootstrap CSS framework in drawing the web application for this project. So this is how the HTML page is structured and the parts of the web application. I have used platly.js in developing the graphical charts of this project. The top part is called the boxes which displays the current values and the historical chart displays the last 12 readings while the gauge chart shows the current values when compared to a given range. The user interface is mobile responsive, so you can view it on your mobile phones with no problem. This is because I use the bootstrap framework in developing the user interface. So, the wiring and the schematic is shown here, and as I'm using the Adaproot CircuitPython DHT library in driving the DHT22 sensors. So let's now go into the code and how I structure this program. So this is the project and it is available in my GitHub repository which you can find also at the description of this video. Let's scan through the important parts of the code. I have here the DHT22 module.py which is actually just uh, an interface to our DHT22 sensor. As I have mentioned, I'm using Adaproot DHT in driving the DHT22 sensor. So I only have here the constructor and then just passing in the pin. And I have here a device coming from the Adaproot DHT. And I have here a function called the get sensor readings wherein I will try to read the temperature in Celsius and the humidity and whatever the values that I receive for the temperature and humidity is returned into the calling client as a Python tuple. The app.py here is where I have created my web server and at the same time, I have assigned the socket IO decorator in this particular file also. As you can see, the DHT module is initializing here and I'm using the PPIO18 of our Raspberry Pi and then I prepared some locking here that will be used later in the code. And then we have created the plus application and the socket IO. Then this is the background thread. As you can see, the background thread will be initialized 
once there is a client that connects to our web server so it just continually reads the sensor readings and once the sensor is retrieved then we get to return it as a json and using socket io we emit this into the calling clients using the events update sensor data then i have here the route which will just render our template which is the index.html and i have here two functions which is the connect and the disconnect which is decorated with the plus socket io once a client has connected to our web packet server then we initialize a thread for it and then we start the thread at the background so that's basically how the socket io is running now the important Part of this project is in the index.html. The index.html is where we have created our web application. The head section is where we import some of the JavaScript and the CSS style. As I have mentioned, I am using Bootstrap, so I have used it here. And then some of the fonts and then the Plotly JavaScript, plus my custom style sheet also, which is index.css and the javascript file for the supplant the socket io.js then i have here some of the code needed for the bootstrap so these are the both the bootstrap code and i have here some code also that will display the boxes the gauge and the chart so this is the sidebar menu i only have one link which is in the dashboard and at the same time i have here the title which is the dht22 weather station dashboard and there's also the creation of the boxes here so there is a box component here where i display the, the temperature and the humidity and below it are the chart for the historical chart which is for the temperature and the humidity and for the gauge is where i have created the div also that will display the gauge so everything in here will be created in the platlib.js, which happens to be in the index.js file. In our index.js file, this is where we created or extracted the elements for the historical chart and the gauge. And we set up some configurations for the platly. So the, for the platly, this is where we set the face and the temperature layout which is actually needed when you try to graph a new chart. So in the platly.new plot, we set the temperature and the humidity dip, and then we set the trace. And in the gauge data, we also have some temperature data and humidity data. At the same time, there is a layout object component also, which is where we set the plotting also of our gauge and our historical chart. And I have here some setup for the temperature. This is where I store the values of the temperature. I only have 12 maximum data points. And I have here several utility functions for the update boxes, which basically just updates the value whenever we receive some WebSocket messages coming from our WebSocket server. The same also with the gauge and the update charts also. And the function update sensor reading is the function that gets called whenever a socket message is received from the web socket server. This is where we call some of our utility functions above, which is that will update our web interface. So I have here the update boxes, gauge, and the update charts. The code here is where the magic of the web socket exchange is happening. So I have here a socket IO code in JavaScript, wherein we connect to our web server application and in this part of the code is where we listen for the event which is the update sensor data and then we call the update sensor readings. The index.css is just a custom CSS style sheets that I have created but it does not affect everything because I have used the bootstrap framework. And that's basically how the code is structured so by just following the code in here then we'll be able to create our own web application that will display our DHT22 sensor readings in real time. And that's it. The write-up for this project, including the code, is can be found at the description of this video. I hope you learned something. Have exploring.